welcome to the Bridge the Divide podcast with Erica Turner and Heidi Wheeler, hosts and founders of the group Bridge the Divide Cedarburg. We hope to provide a forum for discussion and action around racial reconciliation. We seek to identify instances of inequality, foster empathy, and educate others to recognize their part in problems and solutions in Ozaki County and beyond. Hi there. Thanks for joining us today. Um, As most of you know, Bridge the Divide is really committed to bringing to um, the forefront things that we believe will help in our journey towards racial repair, uh, racial reconstruction, racial reconciliation. And sometimes that involves uh, fostering empathy, some education, actively righting wrongs, but sometimes it just looks like the appreciation of work done by people of color. Um, it, it really makes us all richer to appreciate other cultures, whether it be via music or art. And um, I am especially interested in things that are made by us that look like us. So today we're going to look at the fiber art community. And um, I learned how to knit when I first moved to Cedarburg about 10 years ago, and my friend Kristen said it would be easy. You know, well, that wasn't true. But anyway, she taught us anyway. She taught my daughter. She taught me. And we have been making scarves and washcloths just out the wazoo. So about a year ago, I decided that I needed something a little a little higher skill level. You know, I was ready to try something new. I tried some knitted doll patterns, and they kind of looked kind of like folksy and they were cute but they just weren't they weren't floating my boat so I kept looking and I came across some crocheted black and brown dolls with natural hair and I was hooked and I mean I fell hard and hooked that's so funny look what I did there um (laughs) (laughs) so the creator of those dolls is Miss Anika Wilkerson Aniqua and I am so glad that you were able to join us today welcome Thank you so much. I'm actually really excited to be here. And it's so interesting because you're one of my newest students. Right? Yes. Yep. When did you take your first class? Was it like, I feel like it was around the end of last year? Yeah, I want to say because I tried on the Internet on my own. You know how we try that. I'm like, I'm gonna, I can do this mm-hmm. by myself. So I want to say end of summer, <laughs> beginning of fall last year, I was I was in there taking all the classes. Yes, and I and I noticed I was like, oh, she's taking another one. Yep. <laughs> oh, here she goes to another one. So that that made me excited because it's like, okay, that means whenever that happens, I'm like, yes, you know, that means they're getting it. She's yes. getting it because you know it's like you start off and you're like, oh, this is cool, I can do this because they do look intimidating. Right. <laughs> they really do. They really do. So now, how did you get into all this? Tell us about yourself. Well, um, I'm from the Bronx, uh, one of seven children, um, and I grew up loving and playing with dolls and um, being really artistic, Um, and most of my dolls were white, and Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how how much it mattered until I got my first black doll, and I was about eight, and Mm -hmm. it's so crazy that I reflect about how significant it meant to have my first black doll Mm because I didn't realize how much I favored her Mm -hmm. and how much I loved her over all the others um, or why until I decided in 2013 to crochet my first black, uh, my first doll. Mm -hmm. Um, I had learned to crochet at about 18 years old and I was a student in college um, and I would just crochet in between going to class and going to work. And, um, and around 2013, I was like, you know what, I want to do this, uh, big time, you know, majorly, whatever that meant. I didn't know anybody who was doing it like right. big time or, right. you know, it's a weird thing to decide to do after going to college, finishing college and, you know, getting a degree and working, uh, in the field of education to say after all that. Let me crochet for a little bit. Right. <laughs> That's a little a little opposite direction, huh? Yes. It was it was really weird, but I just felt like I wanted to be a bit freer. I wanted to be more artistic. And 
up until 2013, I had been just making all kinds of humanoid uh, creatures. Okay. And I just buckled down and was like, okay, I'm going to make a doll. And of course, instinctually, because I'm black, I was like, let me make a black doll. Uh Um, And I, you know, Googled things to see what they looked like or what, you know, the ultimate structure of it would be. And I was shocked that I had only seen two designers Mm -hmm. that were crocheting black dolls. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that the designers were both white women. So that was even more shock. Right. I was like, okay, wait a minute now. (laughs) You know, and it it was just like one of those moments where it was like, so I know we crochet. Right. Right. Um, but the dolls that I had saw that were crocheted and I was looking Uh and to this day, I remember both of those designers. One is still a very, very cool and uh, active doll maker. And she does a really great job of making all types of doll doll design Mm -hmm. uh, as a crocheter. Um, But the thing that really had me really amazed was that, you know, um, between the two of them, um, out of those two designers, only one of them was actually doing black dolls legitimately. Okay. Meaning um, the other designer, she basically just used brown yarn. Okay. But everything else about the design right. was, you know, right. It, right. you know, it wasn't anything other than the color of the yarn used for the skin tone that made it a black doll. The, the, the other designer, she had done the African Princess and the Pea uh, look-alike doll. Okay. With Bantu knots. And I was like, oh, uh-huh. my God, this is amazing <laughs> to me. Yep. And I was like, she nailed it. And I said, okay, so I got to do this. And not only do I have to do this, but this doll has to be awesome. It has to have nappy hair like me. Right, right. Um, and it has to have brown skin. And then I'm like, okay, I need to find different kinds of brown mm-hmm. because, you know, it ain't just light, medium, and dark. Right. Um, there's everything in between, and there's in between those. And, you know, so I really delved in my very first design. I call her mitochondrial ease. <laughs> 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 because from her, all the other dolls are created, and I keep her out. Every time I finish a doll, I look at her and I say, you were the first. Aww. And I just can't believe that this many years down the line, you know, comparing the last to the first or the most recent to the first, it just some, it's just something to be really proud of. Right. But right. upon researching and creating... Um, it was just amazing to me. I started to think about all of the things I thought about myself. Right. The the conversations that I've had with other black women about what they think about themselves. And you start to really think about things like skin tone, Mm -hmm. hairstyles and textures Mm -hmm. and how, um, how much of a part of our culture, these, these understandings are, you know, how much we, think about or incorporate ideas that are connected to what we look like, Mm -hmm. what our hair is like, how we wear our hair. Um, Because you really do make that so deep. Your dolls are they're they're not only are they just beautiful just in general, but the hair. I mean, that was one of the things that first attracted me to the one that I saw that had the Afro puffs. And I'm like, that's me. It's me with my Afro puffs. I haven't seen a doll that has Afro puffs like that. (laughs) And you know what? That to me is still the best thing to hear ever. Mm -hmm. It's still the best thing because you think about I think about my own childhood and how I got my first black doll. And I said, wait a minute. I think this is me. Right. The other ones, I love them. I still have all of them. Mm -hmm. But when I got the black one, something changed in me. Mm -hmm. You know, because it was like, oh, my gosh, this this doll is so pretty. And Mm -hmm. it's the same shade of brown Mm -hmm. as me. It was something that clicked. And when I reflected on this a while, trying to find the perfect brown and trying to create the perfect texture that mimics black hairstyles. Um, I thought about these things and I thought about why I love this one in particular so mm-hmm. much more mm-hmm. and why it was, why I didn't understand it until years and years later. Right, right. You know, why it connected and why it made so much sense that, oh, my gosh, something is special about this one. And I realized, wow, 
you know, we look around the world, we, we, we interact on a regular basis. And here in this country in particular, from point A to point B, you know, as a black person, a lot of what we see does not necessarily reflect who we are mm-hmm. culturally. Mm-hmm. And so when we're looking at toys and we're looking at commercials and we're looking at advertisement um, and what has uh, what society has deemed beautiful or acceptable isn't often reflected in, um, you know, it doesn't reflect who we are culturally. Right. You right. know, I've had my hair locked since I was 18. Okay. And that was a major decision when I did that. And I didn't realize all this time leading up to becoming a doll maker that these were the necessary steps that were moving me towards this. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, because you think about those things that you're proud of and you think about why you're proud of them and where your values are, what's important to you. What are the things about yourself that you're really, really ecstatic and okay about? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with what you look like? And this is not just being black, but also being a black woman. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because it sounds really, really out of the, the, the realm or unrelated, but it became such a deep thought as I started creating Black Dolls. Okay. Because talking to people who wanted to place orders, um, skin tone is a discussion that for some reason sometimes makes people nervous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I've had people request for lighter skin tone dolls mm-hmm. when I offer a uh, darker skin tone. You know, mm. and so that was a little frustrating. And, I, right. and I'm going to be honest, I'll turn down an order or risk a person deciding to change their mind by explaining to someone who sends me a photo of their child and requesting a skin tone that is not that color. That's not that color. OK. Mm-hmm. I'll turn down a, like I'll have to I'll put it out there like, um, listen, ma'am, mm-hmm. um, she's a little bit on the darker side right. than the color you're requesting. Right. And I offer these colors. So it's not like you have to get your child a a white doll or a lighter skin doll. Because the color isn't there. that's all there is. Right, right. Exactly. Because that was the reason why I had so many white dolls. Mm -hmm. Because my parents, they were like, we didn't always find brown dolls. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah. And then it becomes a situation of, well, what are we teaching our girls beauty is? right. Yep. And we still struggle with that right now. We're adults. We're out in the workplace and we say, well, in order to look professional, you've got to have mm-hmm. straight hair. You can't have locked hair. You can't have your hair in a, um, a teeny weeny fro. You can't do that. That's not professional. All of so, those right, right. OK, and we're going to we're going to head over to a break real quick. Aniqua, and let me um, um, we'll pick up on the other side of the break. All right. Absolutely. Thanks. <laughs> So before the break, we were just talking about how um, seeing yourself and the beauty and what you look like in these dolls and how that's important. But it really does translate to how we feel about ourselves, how we are living out our lives as adults, whether it's in, you know, just out in the community or in your workplace. Do you hear folks telling you that, too, when they're when they're ordering dolls? Um, not, not so much anymore like okay. I used to because things have gotten so in the beginning, I was very, very hands on. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of times I actually would have someone call me and consult with me. Gotcha. Um, because, you know, I mean, I, I also thought that was really important to kind of get a consensus of what people's thoughts were, you know, um, and just to be really, really clear about what they'd be paying for, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, but like you said before, you know, what professional looks like, mm-hmm. you know, and, and what that means for somebody who doesn't grow straight hair out of their head. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, what what beautiful is supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the word association that we have ingrained in us are oftentimes contrary to who we are. And it runs the risk of making us believe or think. Oh, no, these are the these are the images that are associated with these positive terms, right. ideas. And then I'm looking in the mirror, and that's not I don't fit that criteria. Right, right. 
And so what does that say about me then? I either am not worthy or I have to do some unnatural altering Mm -hmm. in order to be that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never mind that there is some value in being who you are and the culture and the background that you come from. And it it always bugs me out when I have this uh, conversation because all of this was evoked through becoming a doll maker. Mm Mm-hmm. A Mm -hmm. black doll maker. Um, I've been met with so many obstacles um, in trying to do this. I remember being in tears about the fact that I needed to do more and I wasn't getting what I felt like I should be getting as far as support and help Mm -hmm. from, you know, family members. It was really, really hard because it was like saying, yo, like, you see this? This is like serious right now. Right. Like, do you understand how... (laughs) How serious this is! Like I was, I felt like <laughs> I felt like like y'all not y'all not getting this. Like right. I got I got eighteen skin tones over here. Why are y'all saying on the lighter side? Right, black right. people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's something that's not anything new in our community either. It's something we've had to to wrestle with for a while. So I mean, you're you're helping out because you can see that that same beautiful doll can be in the darker skin tone and it's just lovely. <laughs> and I think I'm, I've also I'm seen, you. don't you have a, um, don't you have um, a doll with the, the pigment that doesn't have any pigment at all? And I think does she have white hair yes, too. Albinism. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, albinism. Uh-huh. And, and this was, this was the, the, the understanding that I think we have to, be a, a more more conscious of um, as black people. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I don't do a whole lot of, and I don't know if it's good or bad, and you can tell me what uh, you think, uh-huh. but I don't do a lot of pleading my case to non-blacks. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I, and it's it's I just think that we got a clean house first. Mm-hmm. Um, the conversations that I'm super passionate about. Um, I really feel like it's so important for us to understand these under, this 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 thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, I make black dolls. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of black folks or African African American. I don't know what people like to call themselves mm-hmm. too much, and there are people that get up in arms about being called black. Right, um, right. But the term black is not the literal sense. Um, uh, I did a little bit. Of uh, studying and research before I created the dolls representing albinism. Okay. And albinos or albinism occurs the majority in African uh, in African lineage. Um, a lot of uh, the majority of albinos, the percentages are higher amongst black people. Okay. Now there could be a lot of reasons for that. One, you have to think about this. Black people everywhere right Mm -hmm. and when i say black people everywhere there's black versions of everything except white gotcha so there's black chinese or black asians black uh you know there are black versions of everything except caucasian Mm -hmm. you know black hispanics black you know and so that could be one of the reasons why (laughs) that's the fact but that's one of the things that i use to explain that the classification of black is not in its literal sense. Mm-hmm. It simply refers to your ancestry and your lineage. Mm-hmm. And I say all this to say that, you know, when I say I make black dolls, there's a rainbow of right. skin tone right. that the whole includes spectrum. black people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's so important. It's, it's funny because not only do we as black people have an issue with that understanding of thinking, mm-hmm. but there are people that out that are outside of this understanding or outside of being black that have no clue right. that that's a thing. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I remember having, um, when I gave birth to my first child, so it's already kind of nerve wracking. It's my first child and I am pretty dark skinned. Um, and then this child comes out with all of the rest of the genealogy, she was so, and not just, oh, she's pale because the newborns and they get darker. I mean, she was just so, so light. And so I would go to the nursery, you know, and have the, the nurse would look at me and who is it? That baby. Okay. She'd look at my wrist. She'd go over and look at the baby's tag and go, wait, which baby? 
I'm like that baby. Now I've had a C-section. I don't want to have to show you my scar. You need to give me my child. But you know, just the whole not even understanding all of the different things that are that are bound up in generations of of folks that can come out at any time, at any way, and that this is still my child and we don't have to look the same. I mean, I, I ran into it again. She, she's a little bit darker now, but, but even as a toddler, you know, I had people who thought I was the nanny when I had her at the grocery store. I'm like, man, I don't know how to, I, I don't know how to explain it to people, especially in the moment, because it, it makes me angry. But, <laughs> you know, trying yeah. to explain that it's a whole spectrum of people and, you know, mm-hmm. And it's frustrating. It's even more frustrating having to explain it to your own people. Right, you know, right. So, so right. these are the things. But one, one of the things that I am super proud of is I used to get mad about it, um, about these discrepancies. Uh-huh. But I also have to understand that the world is so big. Right. You know, there are loads and loads of things that some people just don't know. Right. That's true. That's and true. I use it as a moment to, I call it cultural share. Oh, okay. Um, let, let let me school you real quick. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. Yes, black people make babies of all shades. That's that's one of the really interesting things about being black. Right. Um. Um. And I don't think that people uh, understand that enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And I'm a huge fan of science. You know, the 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 actual knowing something mm-hmm. versus thinking or assuming or uh, guessing. You know, like the fact is, is that um, I come from a family of seven children. Mm-hmm. Um, my mother is really dark. My mm-hmm. father growing up was really light. Mm-hmm. And so between the seven of us, we, ha- we have a range of brown. Right. So it's never foreign to me right, right. <laughs> to uh, for a, a really light skinned black person, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. to be the child or the offspring of a very dark skinned person. Right. It's not foreign it's regular right and the more Um, we introduce ourselves and the more there are folks out out there like you who are talking about it the more people will get it they'll 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 pick up on it Mm -hmm. and the thing is too i I have so many people are sensitive about having this discussion too, Uh uh because uh, i think that people throw around the word racism and they use it in the wrong context. I feel like more of us need to walk with a dictionary um, <laughs> because really, because to ask questions is not racist uh, to ask. If you don't know and you don't ask, right. you remain ignorant right. to the fact. Right. That's true. Yep. <laughs> so, I, I would much rather you ask me. Well, I mean, I, I think, and we talk about that here. Let's have a relationship first. Don't ask me as a stranger on the street. Let's have a relationship and then ask me questions. I'd be happy to answer questions. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you can ask me as a stranger Ooh. too, because I'm going to tell you, because I'm not offended if you're not being a jerk about it. Right. Like if you genuinely don't know, right. let me help you out so right. that you don't get punched in your eye <laughs> when you ask the wrong, or you, you know, like, <laughs> I'm from the Bronx. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so let me let me help you out so that you don't make the mistake. Right. You know, as right. long as you're not being disrespectful, right. you don't have any ill intent. I, I'll try to help you understand, like um, the whole "don't touch my hair" thing. Oh. Um, oh. If you ask me, and your hands are clean, <laughs> I want I want to help you understand this um, because one. I'm a different kind of person, period. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. don't assume that's because I said yes. Right. That my sister's going to say uh, yes, too. That is true. Um, I'm going to point them my... over to you. I'm like, Aniqua said you can go over and touch her hair with your clean hands. Don't come after that's mine. Because, <laughs> look, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a culture. Because here's what's funny. So things that are familiar to us that mm-hmm. we are regularly okay with and it's normal to us, sometimes it's very foreign to other people. Right. Right. And with no offense, they say things that you look at them like, wait, what? Right. right. That was stupid. Right. <laughs> or that was, and, and, and chances are it's not stupid. It's just ignorant. Right. It's just, this person didn't know. Right. Let me help you Let me know help you out. so mm-hmm. that you could move better in life and mm-hmm. with other people and you don't have these blocks. Right. Because right. you will be offensive right. if you continue thinking and responding on 
on things with very little information. Right. You right. know, that whole don't touch my hair thing is a real thing. <laughs> yes, um, ma'am. I'm not, most people are like, I'm not a pet. Don't pet my head. That's disrespectful. Yeah. I'm not an animal, which right. I completely agree with. Right, right, right. But in the realm of teaching right. and educating, and fixing and uh-huh. cultural sharing. Uh-huh. Let's have a discussion about it. You're not patting me because I'm right. an animal. Right, right. You've never seen dreadlocks in your life. Right, or right. Or you've seen them, and you probably wonder. Again, I, I stole my background. I, I graduated from Lehman College here in the Bronx okay. um, with a degree in sociology and oh. education. Okay, okay. So that helps explain a little bit of why I, my response is the way it is and right. why I approach crochet doll making from that perspective Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so i'm accustomed to professionally like career-wise i've been an early childhood educator for the majority of that career okay and children like to touch that's how they learn right right right? and i'm not saying that uh you know adults should be treated like children but part of our learning is experiencing right right and And that's a good place to start too right if you can i mean things that i have to teach you and explain to you when you're 40 if we had had some of those experiences in the classroom when you were five (laughs) you know we could we could have developed a little different kind of relationship between groups of people so yeah you got to start early and and those are the things so if a person says can i touch your hair and i'm like are your hands clean are your hands clean you got some sanitizer on because i don't know where your hands been (laughs) you are a (laughs) good one and i have to to sleep with this i have to sleep with this i don't want your cooties (laughs) in my hair (laughs) but and and it's also why i approach doll making the way i approach it because a friend of mine who is amazing she uh reminded me for a couple of years you know you can't make all the dolls or for everybody that you know that your hands are going to fall off right 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 um so what are you going to do with this with this skill set, with this creativity. Ah. And she pushed me for two years and was like, listen, you gotta, you gotta make patterns. Okay. You gotta teach classes. And then I was just like, you know, one of the cool things about it is that there are people that don't understand. There is a significant difference between a crochet black doll and a crochet white doll. And it's not just using brown yarn. Uh huh. Wait, okay. Now hold on, hold on an equal. We're going to have another uh, break in here. And I want you to talk to us about that after that break. Okay. Okay. So you're talking about going from making one single doll for every person in the universe or maybe (laughs) having to do some patterns or some classes. Tell us about that. Well, you know, I'm going to be honest. You know, this goes back to the the understanding of bridging that gap Mm -hmm. Um, because at the time uh, I didn't know that we're making black dolls. so I had started this business. I had started really, really taking off for a one-woman show in a sense that people were asking me uh, to create a doll for uh, their children. And what was really interesting was my first customers were not really black people initially. Uh, in the beginning, I got a large amount of people who were requesting for me to make or for their mixed children. Oh, okay, right. Or their or their adopted children. Mm-hmm. Because what I found was these um, non-black people were raising mixed and black children, mm-hmm. and they had run into the same issue mm-hmm. that black parents have been running into for decades. Mm-hmm. Um, they could not find dolls that accurately depicted the child, what their child looks like, and they knew the importance of having a doll looks like the child that they were getting the for. Right. Um, so I was trying to make everything. Every request somebody had, I was trying to fill it. And at the time, it was burnout season because, um, one, I was charging way less than I charge today. Okay. And um, 
it was like I was crocheting. One of the reasons why I crochet really fast now. You do. Because... That's terrible trying to watch your classes. I'm like, what? Is, why does she do that? You know, us slow people are still on the first row. And you're like, okay, so on row 12, no, Aniko, we are yeah, not there. So, <laughs> so you told us to stop so, trying to crochet with you. So. <laughs> and so that's why in all of the course outlines, it says this is not a crochet along. Yep, so um, true. You can definitely ask as many questions as you need while it's going on. Mm-hmm. But um, it's basically the on-camera explaining exactly what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how mm-hmm. I'm doing it, now you should do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of work at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was getting a lot of non-black uh, requests. Um, and on another side of this, and I'm sure there are lots of black-owned businesses and um, business owners who uh, tested. It was hard getting a lot of people to understand how this work is that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Because at $40 a doll, now, <gasps> I had people telling I had people telling me that is way too much oh. to be paying for some knitted doll, no. by the way. And you know, right. that whole knitted first of all, I don't <laughs> This knit. is crochet, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> but um I and I've had I had friends tell me that. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, Oh, we we're supposed to be cool. You understand what's happening here. You know what it looks like when I'm working on these things. Right. And you still telling me that forty dollars is too much. Right. You know, and that that was offensive. Mm-hmm. It was hurtful and mm-hmm. it was a recipe to quit. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because it was like, yeah, the people that you that, that you know don't believe in your situation. Right. Is, you know, am I really able to to get this message across? I right. had um I had a situation where a family member kind of made me feel like, oh, baby, that's too much to be charged. <laughs> <laughs> and she said it with love. Right. And it, and it broke my heart because right. I knew that she meant it. Right. Oh. <laughs> and I knew that she wanted, you know, good for me. And that, that was one of the one of the, the, the things that it almost it almost made me quit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It almost made me quit. Like, girl, you got a degree. Why are you playing over here? <laughs> Um, and I rem- I know I've say- heard you talk saying in the classes too about about knowing your worth and and yeah. this is something you worked hard at you are doing a fabulous job at why is why do you think that you are not worth this amount you can go out well, for uh, any other artist and they they're selling their wares and you're thinking I could make a card why would I pay twenty dollars for a card I, because you're paying for the expertise the love the the uh, the professionalism that goes into making this thing and that's what your dolls are well I'm gonna tell you it goes even deeper than that mm. because the other side of this is how important is this yeah you know, yeah. let's let's talk about aside from the, the economic aspect of it. Um, as a black woman, I started to reflect on who I am, mm-hmm. you know, why I am and what I offer mm-hmm. uh, just in general. What is significant about what I'm doing aside from the work and the time and the money? Mm-hmm. You know, what does it really, really do when you do what you do? Mm-hmm. What are you really, really doing? Um, and what's the value in that? I actually had a, a artist tell me, and he's an amazing artist. He used to work for Disney. He used to design toys for uh, McDonald's. Mm. And he gave me a pep talk. Okay. And it was so random how I found him. This is just a side story that I think was just so amazing. This black author, uh-huh. she did this amazing book. And I love this book so much. Mm-hmm. I love the the premise of it. Um, can I mention it? Is it okay? Oh, yeah, sure, it? sure. Um Penny and the Magic Puffballs. The author is uh, Ananda. Okay, hold on. I don't know if I'm saying the name right. Whatever. Look up the the, the book. Penny okay. and the Magic Puffballs. It's okay. about a little girl who uh, her mom, her friends. She goes to a predominantly white school. Her friends bought in headbands for all of them, and because she had you know kinky nappy hair, mm-hmm. she couldn't wear the headbands and the hairstyles that her friends wore them in, and she kind of felt some kind of way about her hair. And um, her mom actually told her what was so special about her Afro puffs and did her hair in Afro puffs and explained how she felt when she would get her hair, her hair done in Afro puffs. Okay. It was just so, it, it meant a lot to me, this book, this premise, this ideology, this, this, this thinking 
say, oh my gosh, because I've been a nappy headed little kid since forever. Right. And right. I used to hate getting my hair done. Oh. And I just thought my hair was the worst thing about me. Right. Um, and right. the author was uh, doing, she was going to be selling her book in New York City. Okay. And I found out that she was going to be there on a Thursday. I, I found out on a Thursday that she would be in New York for the weekend. And I went to work. I said, I got to make that doll. Oh. And I want to give it to her. Just right. Because I need her to know how much I loved what she did. Right. Um, and so I I took two days. And it, it's so crazy when I think two about it days. now. Two days. I can't I get a head done in two doll. days. But um, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. I worked on her <laughs> character. And Sunday after church, I ran downtown to meet her in person. I was like, Listen, I just love what you've done with this story. It means so much to me as a grown up. Uh-huh. Um, and I just felt like, oh my gosh, other little girls need to hear this. Other little black girls need to hear this because it just resonated with me so bad. And I gave her the doll. I was like, I love her. Aww. I love the character. I love the story. She was like, oh my gosh. You know, so we kind of connected. Right. And I, I just was so excited. She gave me the book. I was like, oh my gosh. This is so awesome. And I didn't think anything about it. Um, I found out later on that the artist, the, the, the illustrator, uh-huh. um, wanted to, to to talk to me. And he became my, like, legit mentor. Oh, wow. Um, he was amazing. And he was the person who told me, listen, you, can make, you can't make a whole bunch of dolls, mm-hmm. um, you know, at the rate that you're making them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're going to burn yourself out yep. your prices are too low right and when he said their prices are too low i'm like but they are telling me that 40 dollars is too much right right <laughs> and it sounded so strange and silly because i'm having a hard time at 40 you telling me my prices are too low right he said listen you have to take into account what you're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. What are these customers paying for? Mm-hmm. He said one of the reasons why you got issues also is because, you know, you're doing a lot for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's cool in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But as people start to order, he's like, when you start getting orders that you can't fill, mm-hmm. that means your prices are too low. People right. are supposed to have problems with their prices. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, <laughs> I said, what do you mean they're supposed to have problems? He said, here's a, here's a trick. They're always going to have problems with your pricing. It doesn't matter if it's $5, $10. Right, right. There's somebody is going to be like, why? <laughs> right. But when they <laughs> so realize like, that it's worth it and that it's, it's exactly. a necessary thing, I need to do it, then you're going to figure out how to do it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And he's like, listen, what is the time? What are you paying yourself for? Right. Like, and then you have to get into the mathematics of it. You know, you have to get into the mathematics of it. Um, but aside from that, what exactly are you selling that is not something that has a set price? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is the value? You are the person who gets to assign the value mm-hmm. to the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think you are selling? Because we can say, oh, you're a doll maker and you're selling dolls and you're just playing with yarn. So right. Listen, and I had somebody <laughs> try to insult me and say, oh, you're just playing with yarn. I can't okay. just play with yarn. Okay. Like, you know, and I thought it was cute because I said, here's the thing, you know, <laughs> it came from a space that was trying to insult me, but it. You know, say it with a different inflection. It's like, yo, you playing with yarn for a living. Look at you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you right. Know? So you say it like that with an attitude. Right. Yeah, I guess it do sound like a bad thing. But if I say it, like, this is what I'm making a living from. Right. And there now, so how did that, you, how did you get from just, not just that, but from that to my kind of thing, university? I mean, that's a giant well, leap. It, it's not really, though. Oh, okay. Can I just be really honest? I, education is my background. Right, right. Yep. Right? So um, I, I'm i self-taught as far as crochet is concerned. I learned from books. I learned before there was YouTube tutorials. And things. So I actually am formally educated in the art of crochet. Okay. Even though, you know, at this time it wasn't like an official thing. And later on, I actually took uh, courses at FIT to become a certified crochet instructor. And this was after I had already taught classes. That's right. just, that was just to make just it the paper. Uh, 
legit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So anybody that kind of talks slick would say, right. oh, who you think you are? Look, I did it. I took the <laughs> class. This, was the, this is what the qualifications were. Right. And I met all of the qualifications. Um, in my mind, I exceeded them, but that's, you know, that's different. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the very least, I've met the, require, the, the requirements to do what I do. Yeah. So anybody that's a hater or has some sort of issue, you know, but it's not much of a leap because the other part of me said, listen, I want people to know. Right. right. Just using brown yarn is not enough to call yourself a black doll maker. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to do more than use brown yarn. There mm-hmm. are things that are culturally indicative mm-hmm. of being black. Mm-hmm. And one of those things is understanding the various shades of brown. Mm-hmm. The other is... uh the hair, mm-hmm. hair, black hair. It, first of all, let's just talk industry wise as far as health and beauty is concerned. We know what the numbers are on um, what black women spend on hair care, health right. and beauty, right. um, those things. There are whole expos right. in various parts of this country alone where they're selling hair care products and things to black women, mm-hmm. weaves and, 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 and hair for extension. And again, for those of us who think, you know, because one of the things that I have to keep saying um, as a disclaimer is, yes, I'm a black woman who wears her hair natural. Mm-hmm. I don't have any issues with women who wear weaves and uh-huh. wigs right. and things like that. Right. Absolutely not, because that's cultural, too. Right. Right. For those who keep thinking or keep saying that black women want to be white women, that's why they do this. That's not true. Mm-hmm. This has been a thing long before it was a thing mm-hmm. among <laughs> black people. <laughs> you right. know now other companies and, and conglomerates have figured out how to capitalize on this right. but culturally as people we are very very artistic period mm-hmm. every single aspect of our existence is almost like artwork at least from my perspective mm-hmm. and so when I talk about you know uh, the hair aspect of these designs this is important because Black people, again, are a very colorful group of people. Mm -hmm. You will find black people with very light skin and very nappy hair at the same time. Right. You will find black people with very dark skin with very straight hair Mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. This is not weird. This is the colorfulness that comes with being black. Right. It's those skin tones and eye colors and facial features and hair texture combinations that make it so amazing to create dolls in the in those images. And so teaching the courses is my way of saying, listen, if you wanna do it, right. then this is how you need to do it. That's right. Don't <laughs> don't just use brown yarn and think you finished. Right. You know? So yes. um be impressed by my friend and also just economically saying, yo, you know, you could do more, you could reach more, and you can uh, be compensated more right. by extending what you do and to teaching others to do it. Right. And every time I take a class, I just, I fall more in love with the dolls. I have, I'm crocheting at church. I'm bringing them, I'm here at the library now. I brought a couple of dolls in. I'm going to send you a picture, Aniqua. I brought a couple dolls in here. Just, it's, it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. I, I feel the love making them I feel the love when I am either giving them away or raffling them Mm. off or it's just it's a lot of love and a lot of appreciation and I didn't have any of that before I found you there I mean there's always the love yourself but I I've never considered myself an artist or even doing anything artsy and this is just a beautiful thing and I'm really appreciative that you decided to share with us (laughs) and do the classes because we need it and I can tell you, here's the other way in which this is no monetary gain, but mm-hmm. just pride and confidence gain. Because when you say you do things like giving them away mm-hmm. or when you auction or raffle them off, mm-hmm. do you know what you do when you do that? You have now given some little brown girl a doll that looks like them where they might not have had one. Right. That was made by hand right. by another person. Right. You know, there was actual intent and love and purpose put into these stitches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you do that. Then there are other women who now have supplementary income because they've taken these courses and now they sell the designs that they make. Right. Right. And the quality in which they're made is is a higher quality 
than just some random person right. who has taken a, who's done a pattern. Don't get me wrong. There are loads of people who can do a pattern like a G mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and get through it. But when, you know, not everybody can read the language. Not everybody want to read, wants to read right, the language. Right, right. So for those of us who can watch a video and say, oh, now I see. Right. You have that option to now actually see it. And, right. and, and, and from start to finish. So this raises the quality of your work because I'm going I'm to go ahead and brag for a second. <laughs> <laughs> the My Kind of Thing University is the only one out like this that does this particularly. Right. That's right. one. Right. There actually, I don't have any uh, competition as it goes uh-huh. for this particular thing at the moment because I do teach crochet in the context of doll making. There's no made up stitches right. or pretend or little exaggerations in these courses they are legitimate crochet courses right. where you learn legitimate crochet techniques and stitches in the context of doll making which basically means that you are not only able to now become a doll maker via crochet mm-hmm. but you in turn become a better crocheter because these are real stitches and and concepts that can be used outside of doll making you are speaking the truth, ma'am. Speaking the truth. I, I appreciate you taking some time to come talk with us about it. Tell our listeners um, how they can find you, how they can find my kind of thing. Give them, give them some information. Okay, so I am uh, everywhere crocheters should be and other places on social, social media where, uh, you know, just people should be. So I'm on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash my kind of thing. I am on YouTube as my kind of thing. I am on Instagram at my underscore kind of underscore thing. And I'm also on Twitter at my underscore kind of underscore thing. Um, I am on Pinterest at my kind of thing. I am everywhere my kind of thing comes up and you see the little uh, yarn ball on a little girl's head silhouette with the hooks coming out that's you that's where you'll find me (laughs) that'll work Thank you so very much. I don't know if I'm happy that I get to share you with other people because now there'll be other people doing my kind of thing. But uh, well, I... <laughs> no, that's that's one of the cool things about my kind of thing. My kind of thing encourages and supports people doing their kind of thing. There you go. So... <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> but that... I appreciate you having me. <laughs> yes, I, thank you very much. And um, we will for the the listeners in the local area. Um, we have another meeting coming up on March fourth. If you can make your way down to the library. It'll be great. Thank you so much, Aniqua, and you all have a good afternoon. Thanks for joining. Thank you. You too.